So what is an IP address? The two parts are network identification and then the unique address. So every device has to have its own IP address, obviously. I mean, Windows is kind of cool, whereas if you assign it an IP address and there's another device already on your network that has that same IP address, it'll come up and tell you. But with a PLC or a device, if you assign it a duplicate IP address, it won't tell you, it just won't work. So. Then our subnet mask is what tells us which part of that address is the network ID and which part is the host ID. And then in the default gateway, if a device is looking for, let's say google.com again, you know, which is related to an IP address, it knows that that IP address is outside of its so local subnet. So it'll look at its default gateway, and, which is usually a router, and get out to the internet that way. So the network ID is shared to all the computers on the same subnet. It's unique for the entire network, and it's kind of like an area code. Then the host ID is that specific IP address that is unique on that subnet and like the rest of the phone number. The subnet mask then, as I mentioned, tells us which part is the network ID and which part is the host ID. 255 identifies the network and decimals one through 254 identifies the host. So important to remember, um, you cannot use 255 or zero as an IP address. So as I mentioned, 255 defines our network. So in this case, 255, 255, 2550 is telling me that the first three octets is my network. So 192.168.0 is my network. So anything that is 192.168.0 can talk to anything else that's 192.168.0. And again, the second example here is telling me that just this first octet is identifying my network. So anything, 10 dot anything dot anything dot anything can talk to anything else with a 10 dot anything, as long as both subnet masks or masks are 255. Now this one, we're defining our network as in the first example, as being the first three octets of the address. So therefore, 192.168.1 is a separate subnet than 192.168.0. Does that make sense to everybody? So they can't talk to each other. And then the last one again, uh, 255, 255, is telling us the first two octets define our network and all the rest of the addresses can be used as our hosts. Subnetting, this is a term that everybody hates and IT guys love to taunt you with. <laughs> so like an IP address, this is what our subnet mask look, looks like. Now a subnet mask needs to be a series of contiguous ones. So as soon as the device sees a zero, it says, okay, that's my network, done. So these bits that are all ones is telling me which part is my network address. So in this example, if you remember my binary slide, this is gonna be represented by 128, this last octet, because the 128 bit is one. So my subnet is actually gonna be 255, 255, 255, 128, which is gonna break me up and it's gonna be two different subnets within that, you know, what we're used to as a 254 host subnet. So then it looks like this. 192.168.0.10 knows that, that it's on a subnet under, or with this number of hosts, so it knows that it's under 128. It's kind of coincidence, it's the same number. 
And then 192.168.0.130 is on a subnet 128 and above. So 130 and 10 cannot talk to each other. They are on different subnets since we broke this in half. Does that make sense? Absolutely, okay. exactly. <coughs> so since subnet masks have to be contiguous ones, there are only going to be certain binary numbers that are going to be used in a subnet mask that is valid, which are these. So the default gateway, as I mentioned, is usually the IP address of the router on your same subnet. A router will have two IP addresses, one that's private, so your device can see it, and one that's public, so it can see the internet. And the device automatically knows that when it's trying to talk to something like 66.105.21, and its IP address is 192.168.something, that it needs to go to that default gateway to get outside of its local subnet. One of the most common tech support calls I get when somebody is trying to, to remotely access their PLC is, you know, I've got everything set up. You know, I can get on my customer's network but I can't talk to my PLC. Well, it seems like most of the time that person forgot to set the default gateway of the PLC. So it's a two-way street. You know, I can get in through somebody's router and I can access that device, but that device doesn't know how to get back to me without the default gateway set. The router will normally be your default gateway. So it's responsible for taking you from your local subnet and putting you out on the internet. So it will have an internal IP address. Let's say it's 192.168.0.1. So then your PC will have a default gateway of 192.168.0.1. So everything after that would be default gateway. Yep. So static versus dynamic IP addressing. This is one of the biggest differences between controls networks and corporate networks. With controls networks, we're going to use static IP addressing because we need to know where our PLC is. Yeah. Then on a corporate network, we're going to use DHCP, or Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol, because managing 254 static IP addresses is a real pain in the butt. You know, again, we can't have any duplicates, so to keep track of those that are in an Excel spreadsheet, make sure you're not handing out any duplicates becomes quite a chore as you get on a larger network. So manually configured. Now, on my network, I will use static IP addresses for application hosts, like my web server, like my mail server, you know, things I need to know the IP address to get at. You know, we'll talk about how IP addresses are related to names here in a few minutes. But everything else, I will usually use DHCP for, all the clients on my network. <coughs> 